Welcome and today we are going to discuss about the influence of culture on consumer behavior and I Dr. Shavanti Mukherjee from Vinod Gupta School of Management in an Institute of Technology Kharagpur uh, will be taking you through uh, this particular topic. So, in this module we are going to cover the meaning elements characteristics of the culture, cultural identities in India. To some extent I will take you through this, but not in details. The various subcultural factors shaping the consumer behavior, cultural adoption process, influences of culture and subculture on consumer and marketers, cross cultural influence and their marketing implication. Amongst this I will take you through uh, the first fourth, fifth and sixth topic in details and rest I will just touch upon while di discuss discussing the rest. So, to begin with we start with the definition of culture, what culture means? Culture is that complex whole that includes knowledge, belief, art, morals, law, custom and any other capabilities and habits acquired by man as a member of the society. So, this was uh, told by Edward B. Taylor in 1871. So, which means that we live in culture, uh, our whatever we learn from our heredity or whatever we learn from our society, from whatever we learn from our organization as a whole uh, forms a certain kind of behavioral norms amongst ourselves. And, uh, we, we actually stay within that boundary. So, that boundary is known as culture and culture is basically a distinctive way of um, life of a group of people that they are complete or rather we can say it is a complete design for the living. We uh, once we grow up, we go to the school, uh, nursery school, then we go up, uh, we go to the uh, secondary school, then college, then university or whatever. Then accordingly, uh, a, a certain age, we have uh, our several kind of rituals like anaprasana, then we have upanayana, this kind of occasions at certain ages. Then we, uh, then even marriage for that also in certain ages. So, these are all you know kind of uh, a practice which is going on by which we also adopt this kind of norms of the society. So, basically as I said we live in culture. So, therefore, the characteristics of culture if you try to uh, analyze it is a comprehensive concept. It includes everything that influences an individual's thought processes and behavior. Culture is acquired, it does not include inherited responses and predisposition. It is since most of the human behavior is learned rather than innate, culture does not affect a wide array of behavior. Culture is learned by interacting with other members of the cultural group to which an individual belongs. I may learn to behave in certain way because I am in, in a particular school where I am studying and in that school uh, may be in the early morning uh, all the students go and perform prayers. For example, students of this Ramakrishna mission schools, they perform a uh, very early morning prayers. So, that has become that becomes a habit within this kind of uh, students and may be they can uh, perform it all throughout their life at least during the, the full period uh, in which they are uh, in school. So, culture is uh, transferred from one generation to another with new influences being added to the cultural soup. That we perform this Durga Puja, that we will buy uh, new dresses during Durga Puja, all those rituals are getting transformed from one generation to another generation. But of course, the type of dress, the type of jewelry might vary because the uh, you know the, the new generation may like some new designs or some 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 modern amenities may be. So, culture is cumulative, we are at 
performing the rituals of Durga Puja, but along with that, we are not only buying traditional saris or uh, you know dhotis, people are also buying different modern dresses, which might be and uh, acculturation from different kind of cultures. I mean, maybe some has come from the British culture, like uh, this pant, shirts, all this thing has come from there. Jeans and all this is coming from again some Western culture, which the young generation is exposed to. Culture is adaptive, it changes in response to the needs of the society. Like using mobile phones, uh, well see till 1980s, 90s, uh, using mobile phone, uh, I mean before 90s it was never a very uh, seen product in the in our country India. In, from 19, uh, end of 1990s or mid of 1990s, we have seen the busy executives, they are using, using this kind of mobile phones, but still it was an executive product that time, but now it has become a necessary necessity. Even the maids, rickshaw pullers or even the lower, I mean to say the lower uh, income people, those who actually belong to the lower social class, they also are using it, because it is not only a status symbol now, it is more of a necessity. So, this is how culture changes, you know, it I mean it is more of adaptive. So, the elements of culture, the first element of culture is the language and symbols. Uh, uh, for example, both you know these uh, languages and symbol act as communication media amongst or within the culture. This communication may be verbal, may be non-verbal using images that convey ideas directly or indirectly. The MNCs operating in multilingual regions must be aware of the implications of each word they use in their advertising campaign and branding nomenclature. Besides, languages and symbols may carry sometimes different meanings and associations in different countries. For example, owl symbolizes wisdom in West, but stupidity in our country. I will cite a very classic example in this context, that is uh, the, how the friction of uh, language was identified in case of Matsuhita, Matsuhita electric, uh, electrics promo of Japanese PC for internet users in courtesy of Panasonic. A huge marketing campaign for USA was waiting on the row for Matsuhita, of, uh, but almost at the 11th hour, they had to cancel the same. Why? The reason was related to the selection of words. Actually, Panasonic resorted to a cartoon character named Udi Utpaker, and the ad carried the slogan, Touch Udi, the Internet Paker. Needless to say, in America, Touch Udi and Paker were considered as slang language or slang words. This incident was considered amongst one of the world's most erroneous branding moves. Hence, the cross-border marketers should be very, very careful in choosing words while operating in multilingual regions. Second is we talk about the customs and rituals. Customs are actually the established rules of behavior within the society, they define what is or not acceptable. In American culture for example, a ceremony is a joyous event or humorous event, whereas in India it is a solemn affair. Rituals are patterns of behavior, quite often complex, they are shared by a group. Rituals may include burning incense sticks during puja or buying a new dress during Diwali. Customs and rituals often represents a substantial marketing opportunity, if it is possible to associate with an object or event commonly referred as artifacts with the festivals. Archers gallery, they design cards for various you know ceremonious occasions, even uh, we can say that uh, Tanish Shubham collection, they are coming with several designs only for the, I mean mostly targeted towards the festive season particularly dhanteras, uh, norms and sanction. The boundaries that culture sets in the behavior of its subjects are called norms. To be more precise, norms are those sets of rules that specify or prohibit certain behaviors in specific situations, based on or derived from cultural values. Although it is a norm in France or USA to kiss an acquaintance just to greet, in Japan also there is a system called Maori, uh, this Maori greeting involved touching of noses. But in India, physical contact for greeting is not so acceptable. 
rather we say namaskar or namaste with a folded hands to whom we want to greet. Second, we that here we see the term called sanction. Now, sanction is certain kind of uh, so, I mean um, which society accepts certain kind of behavior which a particular culture accepts. For example, in the uh, male solely male use uh, usable commodities in uh, Soviet uh, sorry in uh, Saudi Arabia the uh, female models are not so not much allowed on that in that. So, that is a sanction which uh, it is not sanctioned even uh, you know uh, particularly different kind of uh, sexual images are on in the advertisement that can be censored by the uh, censor uh, the by the authority or uh, that will not get a social sanction uh, amongst the customers because in, the, in India particularly because we are not so open about the sexual modes. So, this is some kind of sanctions. Then uh, is values if we say values represent the deepest level of culture, they are the broad feelings about what is good, what is bad, clean and dirty, beautiful or ugly, rational, irrational etcetera. Nescafe has used the sense of optimism uh, amongst the Indian youth in its new advertisement. So, optimism is one of the values which the Indian youth have, so that has been used by Nescafe. Uh, so, this kind of things these are certain elements of culture. Now, we talk about a totally uh, different aspect that is we are talking about the model of cultural process. Okay. So, we talk about when we are talking about uh, the model of cultural process uh, you know like um, you can see it is a three or four step process actually, but it is in many places it is bi directional. Major in the, the points of this particular model is first the cultural model in social and physical environment, cultural meaning in products and services, uh, then rituals and cultural meaning understood by the customer. So, these are the four major blocks and in between there are certain uh, you know by uh, here we see some bi directional blocks and here we. So, I will just now try to explain what this model talks about. The first one I am saying how cultural meaning in social and physical environment is transformed in cultural meaning in products and services. So, two way the meaning is transformed to the cultural you know, to the consumers. First marketing strategies are structured in such a way that the cultural meanings flow from the physical and social environment to the product and services. Just an example uh, say Nestle they show an this is Nestle Nestle they shows an ad that a fully dressed person. Uh, he is in swimming pool and he is enjoying nasty. So, which means an uh, swimming pool is just for relaxation for coolness and that particular um, per coolness that uh, concept is added this is actually added to this particular ad or um, particular product that is nasty. So, it is cool. So, sometimes customer themselves want to acquire this cultural meanings in product in order to establish a desirable personal identity or self concept. For example, nail polish it is an object of style may be that is what we understand why because we have seen from uh, years together the film stars of the fashion models were using nail polish. So, we associate nail polish with fashion or style and now if we want ourselves to be fashionable we try to uh, you know uh, buy nail polish to show that we are also fashionable. So, this is some way the meaning has been transferred. Now, how this cultural meaning in the social environment actually moves to the products and services? As you can see this actually moves through different marketing strategies, but it is filtered through the prevailing fashion system. And it can also pass through other institutions. I will just discuss one by one marketing strategies. So, let us come first. So, how cultural meanings uh, move to the product this step by marketing strategies. So, what are the strategies we are talking about? First is by advertising strategy, it can uh, move you know the cultural meaning. How? Because if I show in the Flipkart ad that uh, you know. Uh, or Snapdeal ad that I am sending uh, gifts through Snapdeal or Flipkart during a festival season or Diwali. 
So, which means that during your uh, you know sending gifts, you can use uh, Snapdeal or you ca you can buy from Snapdeal and send. You can buy from Flipkart and send to a particular person. So that advertising message actually uh, flows a meaning to the product. In this case, the service that is Flipkart. So similarly. Uh, advertising messages can also like uh, if if the product if it shows that you know like uh, read and tailor for all occasions when Amitabh Bachchan is using uh, is shown in the ad read and tailor it shows the kind of elegance it is having the product itself because the associated ambience was created in that way so that the cultural meaning is actually transferred to the product itself. It could be transferred through pricing strategies as well. A very expensive product like uh, Mercedes Benz or Rolex watches, this actually by the pricing itself, it sh shows that it is an elegant product and so th that is how it is uh, the pricing itself can transfer a kind of meaning. The disc discount strategies like Walmart and uh, your uh, pantaloons, these people they keep on giving different kind of discount. So, that itself develops a certain idea about the stores. Big Bazaar and all they give different kind of weekly discounts and that develops a kind of culture uh, for this uh, shopping malls for the customers because in the weekends we can see generally the footfall is higher and people assume that okay, we can uh, bargain or we can get a better deal if we go uh, during the weekend. So, weekend is the best time for shopping in Big Bazaar. So, this is the idea or this is the culture which has been built in the mind of the customer. Products can be designed accordingly, pouch packs or sachets, we may say that okay, uh, this particular packaging design has been done either for the uh, low income section or for the single, uh, say if it is dove and it is a sachet of uh, 3 rupees of dove shampoo, then it might be for these uh, you know the uh, single uh, person households. So, that is the kind of idea we have different kind of product design also transfer different kind of meaning. I will just share one uh, very small incident here that is long back in 1980s in the Japanese television market. Now, what a, I mean rather it is a, a Chinese television market, uh, but two players were there. One is the European player and the Japanese player that time they were producing very good quality of televisions. Now, uh, once the European manufacturers they uh, s have seen the uh, customer habit in China that they are more inclined towards saving, they are more uh, future oriented rather than uh, they are living in today. So, given this they thought that you know we cannot develop a lower price product. So, probably uh, China is not a market for us. So, they concentrated in the other part. Japan thought this is an opportunity. This is an opportunity and they thought that you know that it is possible if, if they if you know we let us you know the Chinese people have a certain kind of habit that they accumulate money over a period of time and then they want to spend that. So, they targeted the savings of the Chinese customers and how they can use a part of savings for buying a television and they, they by this technology also they have developed you know like. Uh, the they, they, they have uh, they have developed the you know televisions also which can be of you know little uh, little uh, lower priced but with a good technology of course and it targets to uh, to the savings of the Chinese customers that's how Japan has flood uh, Japanese televisions flooded the Chinese market on the contrary European television systems they have or the manufacturers have missed this opportunity. So, this is where you have to be very careful regarding the product designs. Now, our distribution models I probably have discussed in the other um, sessions about Hindustan Unilever's project Shakti initiative where several lower priced fast moving consumer goods from Hindustan Unilever is uh, marketed through Shakti Amas or uh, the local uh, women entrepreneurs. So, that you know that shows that it is for the rural in these products are precisely targeted towards the rural India and it is distributed accordingly. Now, the second part is how cultural meaning flows from products to consumers. Now, cultural meaning pro moves from products to consumers through different kind of rituals. 
Now, what are these rituals? Rituals are symbolic actions performed by consumers to create, affirm, evoke or revise certain cultural meanings. There are six types of rituals through which you know the cultural meaning flows from products to customers. One is possession rituals. When I buy something, say I buy, I have bought a new house and I call people in housewarming party. There, you know, uh, so that's a that's a culture. So that could be shown even in the advertisement of colors like different paints. Colors means I mean paints. So paints can use this. Then different interior decorators can use this kind of things. Even different uh, uh, so real estate companies can use this thing in their advertisement or promotional campaign. Exchange rituals. Like during Durga Puja or different celebrations, we keep on exchanging the gifts. Uh, Diwali, we keep on exchanging the gifts. Uh, so, this that also uh, like your Flipkart and all, they have used this exchange rituals also. Grooming rituals like male will dress in a particular way, female will dress in a particular way. Virginia Slims, if you say, uh, if you close your eyes and say Virginia Slims, we think of an image of a girl itself. If you say Marlboro cigarette, we have an image of a man. So, this you know kind of you know image which or maybe like J. Hampstead, J. Hampstead um, shooting, shooting, uh, shooting, which is like uh, you know promoted by Rithik Roshan these days and uh, in, uh, it is saying that uh, in a different league. So, this J. Hampstead or uh, if you talk about Virginia Slims, these are talking about different the products for different genders itself. So, the, this is a grooming ritual from which we, un we infer different kind of uh, cultural meaning that this product is for male, this product is for female, this product is for uh, young stylish person and this product is for a professor, this product is for a uh, doctor or uh, so on and so forth. Divestment rituals, sometimes we try when while selling the uh, house or the car, we try to move certain positions with which we are too much attached. Like our old car, old watch, uh, so, uh, so some, some uh, attachment, uh, some accessories in the car with which we are like say some models in the car, some dolls in the cars with, with whom, uh, with which we are too much attached. So, those kind of things we try to remove. So, these are the divestment rituals. Then we have acquisition rituals like ice cream is for fun, ice cream is for relaxation. So, these are some kind of acquisition rituals, bargaining rituals when we know that when to get a best, best deal. So, how to bargain? There are some fixed price stores, there are some bargaining, you know, dollar stores, or there are some kind of bar stores like uh, Dilly Hut and all where we can bargain also. So, this shows that uh, this is a bargaining and uh, how to bargain. Uh, sh shall we start with the uh, if the shopkeeper says 200 rupees price, shall we start with 100 rupees to bargain or we start with 150 rupees uh, to bargain? So, that develops a particular culture in a particular market how to bargain and then how cultural mean uh, what are the cultural meanings in consumers. See cultural meaning in consumers if we consider to different kind of uh, you know it varies across the society and uh, particularly and um, sometimes for example, Danish they love eel, uh, Mexicans they love chili, Irish they love uh, Guinness, French they love cheese. So, this it may have different meaning in different culture and secondly you know like uh, some people try to get a reproduction of the product like I am a cricket fan. So, I want to buy uh, cricket jerseys. So, this kind of things and then the last part is moving the meanings of culture meanings to the cultural environment. This is the last part of our model you can see here. So, here our there are two steps as you can see one is through the people's social behavior or interaction. Uh, a person who adopts certain kind of stylish behavior, wear designer dresses or uh, wear boutique dresses and uh, he is working in an ad agency, he is con constantly going there in that way and that slowly he is seeing that his colleagues are also started developing and by buying this kind of dresses and uh, as a whole uh, they have started behaving, they have started buying almost similar kind of dresses and which means that they earlier had a different dressing habit, but now from this person this culture has been has been flowed to the 
other members with whom he or she is interacting. This is the way the reference groups like the celebrities particularly you know they spread different uh, kind of dressing habits to the uh, or particular fashion amongst the customers. And it then, then it is a reciprocal process, it is a part of cultural process, then somebody else who is again coming to that particular uh, joining to that particular ad agency, he starts dressing in the same way. So, which means first one person started dressing in a particular way and the others st started following him and now when a new person is coming, he or she feels that that is the culture of the organization. So, he or she starts adopting to dress in that particular way. So, it is a reciprocal way of uh, doing things. So, these are some of the uh, in a very quick shot I will just say about the value system and marketing relations here. These are cultural values basically like self oriented values, materialism. The meaning is importance attached to materialistic acquisitions. The Indian situation is earlier generation would not approve, now they are accepting. Lessons for multinational marketer is lifestyle is not fully oriented towards materialistic position. Uh, value here is immediate or delayed gratification to people leave for today and uh, Indian situation is earlier saving was a virtue, but now people have started borrowing also. So, the credit card driven economy is coming up sexual mores. So, the this is this means the perception towards sex in India it is still a closed door affair. So, sexually explicit messages may not be so much liked hard, uh, hard work and leisure. So, the meaning is whether working harder than is economically necessary a virtue in itself. So, in any situation no having leisure and time for oneself is equally important than hard work. So, the role models who only work hard, but do not able to uh, they are not and are not able to enjoy the fruits of their labor, which means they cannot enjoy the money which they have earned. They are not our role models rather the Raymond's complete man is our role model. Other oriented values individualism versus collectivism we can see here are the individual activities and initiatives valued more. To say Indian situation is Indians are not team oriented only one person can occupy the top position. So, the comparative advertisement works best because we assume that at the top there should be only one person. Romantic orientation India uh, has nothing to do with sexually permitted this thing it is much a soft appeal or platonic appeal. So, the message for the multinational marketer is intimacy is unlikely to help to promote the product. Child role or adult child role here also given the nature of the Indian customers, the lesson for multinational marketer is they must sell the product to both the child and the parents, child cannot independently decide on the categories. Male female dominance wise still a male dominant society. So, messages that show independence of women will only be um, appealing to the upper income society or very very educated society. Competitive situation it is competition oriented messages are welcome in India age wise messages where parents work better uh, works more because we see that wisdom is synonymous to age. Some environment oriental issues are oriented issues are there like cleanliness it is little limited. So, the hygiene products have limited appeal uh, till now, but it is increasing. Performance or status wise well established products or the well established brands, brands from Nestle, Hindustan Unilever succeeds more. Tradition consumers are not the crusaders, so I can work within the system. Uh, risk taking they are not much risk takers and control over the nature you see in case of in India here yeah, um, I mean they still feel that everything cannot be understood or uh, you know. Uh, so, for the cross culture we say that cross cultural problems definitely provide more challenges and opportunities in the 21st century marketers, although they might not be totally new in the marketing area, but still to know the culture of different society becomes very very important. And although there are could be some unsolved problems as well or issues that need to be solved and discussed by the scholars in terms of culture, how to be more culturally adaptive, how uh, to go for more of acculturation that is mixture of culture, how the McDonald's should work, how KFC should work, how uh, the other uh, multinational brands should work. Though some adaptations have already been done like KFC is coming up with a thali meal so because uh, or rice bowl. So, we should 
um, rice bowl by McDo um, KFC basically, which shows that you know that uh, which which tries to match with the eating habit of the Indians. Similarly, McDonald's assume that you know Indians religiously do not like ham, so therefore they have changed the hamburger with chicken stuffing and they make it Maharaja Mac for our country. So this kind of cultural adaptations are going on, but still how to make it even better. So that is still an area of research by the marketers and the scholars. So let us see how things unfold. So till you know, goodbye and we will meet in the next session.